twist scripture to fit your little, you know what, just, just go. Seriously, go. You're the reason why Christians are getting their, their butts handed to them. You want to be going to love the world so much? Then go love them. Again, bend over and let the sodomites sodomize you like do each other because that's all you are good for. You scripture twisting Jezebel. Bend over and let the sodomites sodomize you like do each other. Bend over and let the sodomites sodomize you like do each other. Bend over and let the sodomites sodomize you like do each other because that's all you are good for. All right, gonna do a video showing that Rich Pankowski actually exposes himself and proves that he is a Pharisee, okay? And we're gonna scripturally show that, but here's a, a video of his he did uh, back in, it was back in July of 2020, actually, I go full screen. And he's talking about gotquestions.org. And you know, gotquestions.org, I do believe they are Calvinists. Uh, they, they have promoted some of the Calvinistic heresies on their website, including the uh, total depravity. So I would disagree with them on that, but they are sound in, in a lot of their doctrine. Uh, I just, I disagree with the Calvinism they promote. Obviously, I've done videos exposing Calvinism. Calvinism is of the devil, clearly. It's a false, it's, it's essentially an attack on the gospel. But he's talking about them. And one of the things that Calvinists actually do get right is the scriptural fact that the gifts of the Spirit that were being performed by the apostles, the apostolic gifts, are not for the, the church today. Okay? Now, there is still examples of the Holy Ghost doing miracles, and they can still happen today. Uh, how do you cast out devils, and how do you heal people? By prayer, by fasting. Okay, It's not this kind of thing that the charismatics make it out to be. But Rich Pankowski uh, actually proves that he is a Pharisee and twists the word of God, because you see, one of the things about the Pharisees, one of the aspects of them is they're always demanding signs and wonders. And you're going to see... That's why I say, too, that the charismatic movement are modern-day Pharisees because they're constantly demanding signs and wonders saying just wanting to walk by faith, not by sight. And you're going to see how Rich Minkowski twists the word of God to make it seem like the gifts were... Because it's a scriptural fact that the gifts were uh, for unbelieving Israel. They were to show them that God was doing a work. And Rich Minkowski twists the verse of scripture and leaves out parts. I mean, the guy is just a lying, deceitful devil to the core. He is a, uh, but of course he uses a lot of the modern versions. I mean, there's so much I could say about this guy. He's got so many errors, so many problems. He is truly a child of the devil. But let's play this clip right here. Uh, enough of me talking. Let's actually listen to what he says and refute this scripture twisting charismatic Satanist. Up three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so their site doesn't come up with the first page. Oops. First page of Google. So let's type in got questions. Is cessation, is cessation and biblical? And their answer is, is cessation is the view that the miracle gifts of tongues and healing have ceased, that the end of the apostolic age brought about a cessation of the miracles associated with that age. Most cessationists believe that while God can still can and still does perform miracles today, the Holy Spirit no longer uses individuals. That, that is true. I mean, I'm not like, like, like the term cessationism is kind of misleading because I don't believe that the Holy Ghost never does miracles. But how does, how does he do miracles today? How does he do works today? Okay. It's not this thing. See, the charismatics, they twist that into making it seem like their hireling ministers are some, have some kind of special power from God. No. When it comes to healings, how is one healed? Well, here's how. James chapter 5, verse 14 and 15. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Okay? And notice too the connection with sin and being sick. Oftentimes, if you're sick, it, it sometimes can be because you're, you're being chastened by God because of unrepentant sin. But we see there, how is how are you healed? By prayer from the elders. It's not some kind of thing where you have to go to this charismatic healing, you know, session and they, they top, tap you over the head and you're healed. No, it's done through prayer. Same thing with casting out devils. And it's, these are the things these charismatic heretics will ignore because they're essentially trying to glorify themselves through these these uh, counterfeit miracles they do. Mark chapter 9, verse 29. And the context is about the uh, devil possessed, the child with the devil in him. And actually, I'll go to verse 27. Uh, and Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up, and he arose. And when he was come into the house, his disciples asked him privately, Why could not we cast him out? And Jesus said unto them, This, this kind, this can, this sorry, this kind can, um, yeah, this kind can come forth by nothing but by prayer and fasting. Okay, how do you cast out devils? Do you have to go to some charismatic, you know, healing session? No, prayer and fasting. You see, and these are the scriptures these charismatic devils will ignore. Because they want to get your money, plain and simple. And by the way, these charismatic healers, they're not casting out devils, they're actually imparting devils. So, but anyway, continuing on. 
to perform. But, but, yeah, but just to clear things up, like I forgot to mention this earlier, I don't. I do believe that there is miracles today, but it's not. It's not in the sense of the charismatics how they portray it. It's done through prayer and fasting, not through this, these charismatic circus events they they hold. These that, that are reminiscent of the circus. I'll put it that way. Miraculous signs. The biblical record shows that miracles occurred during particular periods for that specific purpose of authenticating a new message from God. But that's not what the Bible says. Okay, Moses was enabled to perform miracles to authenticate his ministry with Pharaoh. And that is true. Elijah was given miracles to authenticate his ministry. Not a new message from God, their ministry. And that's what the word signs actually means. It's like this. Okay, so are you an apostle, Rich? See, notice how it was the apostles, people in the Bible doing these miracles, authenticating their ministry. Because why? Well, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 12, what are these signs for? See, these are scriptures this, this uh, Satanist Pinkowski won't, won't show you. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 12, Truly the signs of an apostle were wrought among you in all patience and signs and wonders and mighty deeds. Okay? Uh, you're not an apostle, Rich. Okay? Plain and simple. This is what these charismatic devils don't understand. The signature, the signet, it's God's signature that the message being delivered is authentic. So if you're that yeah, message by the apostles and prophets, you know, we, we don't need that today. Why? We have the completed word of God. That's all that we need. We don't need signs and wonders. In fact, you read Second Peter chapter chapter uh, one, verse 16 down to verse 21. It says it shows that the word of God is our more sure word of prophecy, even over voices from heaven. So yeah. you should see signs, right? So that second paragraph is absolutely true it's it you know but you see how they twist it with their propaganda so jesus ministry was also marked by miracles which the apostle john calls signs he points at miracles of proof all the authentic authenticity of jesus's message after jesus resurrection as the church was being established and the new testament was being written the apostles demonstrated signs such as tongues and the power to heal tongues are for a sign not to them that believe but to them that believe not okay the Apostle Paul predicted the gifts would cease, but that's but it's completely taken out of context, okay? And they use 1 Corinthians 13 8 as, as their proof text. It says, love never ends, as for prophecies they will pass away, as for tongues they will cease, as for knowledge will pass away, okay? But they didn't actually give you the full thing. So if we go to 1 Corinthians 13 8 and we actually read on, you'll see. This is what, they, this is what most false teachers and false teachings do. Because again, you got to remember. teachers like you, Pankowski, you're doing the exact same thing right here, you wicked devil, you little hypocritical snake. They believe that they cease because they run a type of Calvinist site, right? But they give you a part of a verse. You no, know, Calvinism is wicked, indeed. But you're wicked as well, Pankowski. You see, the heresy of Pankowski is what's called Pelagianism. It's every bit as wicked as Calvinism. See, Calvinism, Pelagianism, they're both equally as false and heretical. So I don't fall into either category out of context to fit their narrative you know but that is that what scripture really says does it say that gifts have ceased okay right love never fails but there are gifts of prophecy but you know of course he's quoting his modern version so i'm just gonna let him say it while i hold the king james the actual word of god out not his vatican perversions if if there are gifts of prophecy they will be done away with if there are tongues they will cease if there is knowledge will be done away for we know in part that we prophesy in part when the perfect comes, the partial will be done away. When I was a child, I spake like a child, right? Think like a child, reason like a child. When I, became, when I became a man, I did away with childish things. For we now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now, I now in part, but I, then I think, I, I think it's quoting from an ESV because it says in verse 10, but when the perfect, which is not what the King James says, it says when that which is perfect is come. See, notice how the ESV twists it and takes away from the fact that verse 10 is clearly referring to the word of God, that which is perfect, okay? But the ESV says, the perfect, which which Benkowski would try to say that, oh, it's referring to Jesus Christ in his second coming. Yeah, because you're using your modern, modern Vatican perversions, which, by the way, these false gifts of the spirit the charismatic devils like doing trace back to the Roman Catholic Church and the Jesuits ha and the Jesuits and all their, their false Catholic saints and everything else. That's, that's where these, these false charismatic gifts came from. I did a video on that, but continuing on. I will know fully just as I have also been fully known. But now faith, hope, love, abide, these three, but the greatest of these is love. So we have 13.8, but they didn't give you verse 9. They didn't give you verse 10. When the perfect comes, the partial will be done away. Has the perfect come yet? Yes, it has, the word of God. But you see, you don't have the word of God. You're quoting a modern Vatican version, which... 
uh, takes away from the fact that verse 10 is referring to the word of God. Again, compare verse 10 over to 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 19, verse 16 down to verse 21. It's clearly referring to the word of God, that which is perfect, our more sure word of prophecy. Okay, this is the Corinthians. So a lot of cessations say, well, the perfect because remember, this, remember, this was written before the word of God was, was fully completed yet. So that which is perfect has not had not come yet fully. Bible. But that's not what it says. It doesn't say the word of God. It says the perfect. This is talking when Jesus comes no, back. It does, not, it does say that in the word of God. It just say, it doesn't say that in your modern Vatican perversions, you lying snake. For the church, okay? That hasn't happened yet. Wait. God, this is the perfect. A lot of cessations say where well, the perfect was the Bible. But that's not what it says. It doesn't say the word of God. It says the perfect. This is talking when Jesus comes back for the church, okay? This is, this is talking when Jesus comes back for the church. Uh, Chapter and verse. Where, where is that anywhere in the context? You know? Maybe in your modern Vatican versions, but see, he's twisting the word of God, just like a Pharisee would. Continuing on. That hasn't happened yet. But you see, they twist and distort things to fit the narrative. Like because, you do, like you are right now. They don't believe in miraculous signs anymore. So if they're saying that we don't need it, then how do we know that God questions what they're saying is authentic? There's no God signature on it. There's no sign. No, again, these signs are not for... The, those signs were for the apostles to, to basically authenticate their ministry. So you notice how Pentecostal's, and again, I don't agree with, with GotQuestions.org on their Calvinism, but they're right when they say that it was for the apostles. It was a, to uh, basically show their ministry was legit from God. It's not It's not for you today, Pinkowski. You're not an apostle. Of God's authenticity, you know, dem, uh, uh, proving this message true, it's simply not there. They're simply giving you their opinion. Okay? Now, on, on top of that, but we see a lot of other things here. You know, there are there are there are accounts, extra biblical accounts of signs being performed by Christians from Jesus' time all the way till now. Extra so biblical accounts from Christians doing signs. Yeah, Roman Catholics. Okay, and by the way, too, extra biblical accounts don't prove anything. Okay, so whether or not they they do signs. And by the way, too, I don't deny the fact that they were doing signs because we read Revelation chapter sixteen verse, I believe it's verse thirteen to fourteen. We see that devil spirits they can perform miracles too. You know. So that this doesn't prove anything other than the fact that there was false signs and wonders back then too, you know. See this Roman Catholic reasoning of well, we, we can't handle the word of God. What 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 did the early church? What did they do? This doesn't prove anything, you know. Bible believing Christians, we deal with scripture. We don't we, like like I'm, I deal with scripture. Okay, I could care less what what the early church believed or what what they say the early church believed or didn't believe. Doesn't matter. Okay, if if they were doing signs and miracles the post during the post apostolic times. It just shows that these false signs and wonders were back that were present back then as well. That's all that it proves. So these guys, they demonstrate they they they, they don't give you any of that stuff at all. Oh, and They're by the way, too. Uh, again, I could say a whole lot more on this, but how is this proof Pankowski as a Pharisee? Well, because he's overthrowing the word of God by his traditions. You know, you read Matthew chapter fifteen, verse one through nine. That's what Pharisees do. So Pankowski proving himself to be a Pharisee, giving you their opinion, right? So they go on here to say this. The apostles, though, who, whom tongues came, were unique in the history of the church. Once the ministry was accomplished, the need for authenticating signs ceased to exist. That's not in the Bible anywhere. That's their opinion. Actually, that is in the Bible. Read 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 16, down to verse 21. All we need is the word of God. We don't look for signs and wonders. We walk by faith, not by sight. But you see, who does look for signs and wonders? Well, let's see who, let's see who does. And hint, it's not say people who do. Matthew chapter 16, verse 1 to 4. Uh, the Pharisees also with the Sadducees, see that the Pharisees also with the Sadducees came and tempting desired him that he would show them a sign from heaven. Uh-oh, it's the Pharisees who are demanding signs and wonders. Uh, verse 2, and he answered and said unto them, when it, is e when it is evening, you say it will be fair weather, for the sky is red. And in the morning, it will be foul weather today, for the sky is red and lowering. O ye hypocrites, how you can discern the face of the sky. Uh, but you cannot discern the signs of the times. A wicked and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign. Sorry. Hello, Pankowski. Wicked and adulterous. By the way, this guy is an adulterer, by the way, so fitting description. The wicked adulterer. And there shall no sign be given unto it but the sign of the prophet Jonas, and he left him and departed. And by the way, the sign of the prophet Jonas is, you know, as Jonas was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. So... It's actually the Pharisees who are demanding signs and wonders and not wanting to just walk by faith. So thank you, Pankowski, for further proving you're a Pharisee. But because they give you a couple scriptures beforehand, 
they expect you to take this on faith. You'll notice, if you go on their site, there's no scripture for that. There's nothing that says there's no need for signs to be authenticated. Nothing. If you go back in the Bible and it talks about signs should follow them that believe, it is something in the Greek, it's continuous action. Oh, oh, Greek. Oh, let's go to the Greek now to overthrow the word of God. And I'm not against going to the Greek, but when you use it in this kind of way to try to prove your point, and you know, I mean, I'm not against going to the Greek to like define certain words, but the way this guy does it, he acts like he's some kind of, I mean, the guy is just so full of pride, it's ridiculous, but he talks about, you know, then, so, then shall signs follow. Again, who is he talking to in this passage there? The apostles, okay? The disciples. And notice something else as well I want to, I want to point out. And this will be actually be a challenge to any charismatic who are watching this. Here's actually a challenge to you, by the way, as well. I've said this in other videos, but notice how, okay, verse 6, 17, 18, Mark chapter 16, verse 17 to 18. And the signs shall follow them that believe in my name. Shall they cast out devils? They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And look at this. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall, they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Notice that. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. Okay, so Pekoski, if you think the signs are for today, I have a challenge for you. Drink some poison on camera. You know, oh, you're tempting the word of God. Oh, you know, you're tempting the spirit. Um, 1 John chapter 4, verse 1, 1 through 3 says, actually commands me to try the spirits and test the spirits. So if you have the signs and wonders, uh, drink some poison on camera. Plain and simple. It doesn't say that, oh, you know, if you want to, if you need to, or, or you know, it just don't tempt the spirit. No. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. Come on, okay, Picasso, let's see you do it. If this is for Christians today, let's see you do it, you know? And again, before anyone accuses me, oh, you're tempting God, you're tempting God. No, it's called trying the spirits, whether they be of God. First John chapter four, verse one through three. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Right here. So, and also too, Revelation chapter two, verse two. Revelation 2, verse 2. I know thy works. Uh, yeah, sorry, that was the verse I was looking for. Sorry. I know thy works, and thy labor, and thy patience, and thou hast thou canst not bear them, which are evil, and thou hast tried them, which say they are apostles, and are not, and hast found them liars. Okay? So let's see you do it, Rich. If you have the gifts of the Spirit, if you think these are for Christians today, do it on camera. You know? I'm trying the Spirit. I'm, I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm busy testing your spirits to see whether they're of God. So... Continuing on. It's ongoing. It's not a one-time event. It's not something that, that you do now and it's done in the past and it, it gives them the future. Okay? Those are tense usage of the verbs there in Greek. But that's not what we see there. In the Greek, it says that they are ongoing. They are continuing to whoever who, whoever believes or whoever is believing. That's not what the text says. You lying, you, you lying scripture-twisting devil. That's not at all what the text says. Scripture-twisting Satanist. It's an ongoing issue. It's not ended. It doesn't say that whoever believed or it's only for these apostles. The Bible says that these signs, these gifts, are for those who are continuously believing. Where, chapter and verse, where does it say that? See, notice how he attacks them for not giving scripture, but he himself is not giving any scripture. He's a hypocrite, just like the Pharisees in Matthew 23. So thank you once again for further proving you're a Pharisee. Okay. It's not true. It's a false doctrine. And it goes to the other doctrine. It's once saved, always saved. You can't fall away. You can't blaspheme, blah, 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 blah. It's just an example. Uh, you can't. You can't blaspheme the Holy Ghost today because Jesus Christ is not physically on the earth. There's another thing these charismatic devils like using against you. When you, Whenever you test their spirits as commanded in 1 John 4, they'll say, oh, you're blaspheming the Holy Ghost. No. Let's actually look at the verse. Uh, where is it? Matthew chapter... Because what, what's going on is that in Matthew chapter 12, in Matthew chapter 12, the Pharisees were accusing Jesus of doing his miracles by the power of Satan. And he says, um, Matthew chapter 12, verse 20, 31 to 32, Wherefore I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men, but the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. And whosoever speaketh a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him. Notice this, neither in this, this world... Okay, when he's presently on the earth at that time, neither in the world to come, okay, the millennial kingdom, when he's again physically on the earth. Okay, what's going on here? You can't commit the unpardonable sin unless Jesus Christ is physically on the earth. And I also add too, you can't commit the unpardonable sin by just accusing a man of doing it by the power of Satan. You're only in danger of committing the unpardonable sin if you're saying that Jesus Christ himself is doing it by the power of Satan. 
I'll just point that out as well. Because who are the Pharisees talking to? They're talking to Jesus Christ. Okay? That's what the text is saying. You can't commit the unpardonable sin if Jesus is not physically on the earth. And here is more proof of that. Okay? In Acts chapter 2, the apostles are actually being mocked for doing the gifts of the Spirit. And guess what? They don't threaten people with, with committing the unpardonable sin. Here it is. Uh, Acts chapter 2, verse 12, down to verse uh, 15. And they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, What meaneth this? Others, mocking, says, said, These men are full of new wine. But Peter, so look at this. They're being mocked for doing the gifts of the Spirit. The actual genuine gifts of the Spirit. And notice how Peter responds. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my words. For these are not drunken, as ye suppose, seeing it, but, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. Okay, and it goes on to preach the gospel to them. So the actual gifts are being performed, they're being mocked, and they're not and, and Peter, doesn't, Peter does not threaten them with being in danger of the committing the unpardonable sin. Further showing that you can't commit the unpardonable sin unless Christ is physically on the earth. And unless you're accusing Christ himself of doing his works by the power of Satan. So, these, these again, these devils like twisting that text to justify their own wickedness. Uh, uh, of them not knowing what the Bible says and giving their opinions instead of scripture. And it's, it's very pointed there. There's no scripture that says it. Number two, it says, the miracle gifts are only mentioned in the earliest epistles, such as 1 Corinthians. Later books, such as Ephesians and Romans, contain detailed passages of the gifts of the Spirit. But the miracle gifts are not mentioned. Although Romans does mention the gift of prophecy. Wait a minute, you just said they were done. But you said Romans doesn't mention them, but they do. Hmm. But to the average reader who's looking for something to validate their belief, they're not going to catch stuff like that. The Greek word translated prophecy means speaking forth and does not necessarily include prediction of the future. Oh, so you're giving us your, your personal interpretation. I got it. And once again, there's no scripture to back that up. The gift of tongues was assigned to the unbelieving Israel. It doesn't say that. It says assigned to the unbelievers. It doesn't say Israel. They um, again, where does it say assigned to unbelievers and not about Israel? Again, he's twisting the word of God. Added the word Israel into their opinion. The gift of tongues was assigned to It's not the opinion. It's what the word of God says. Okay. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 22. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 22. For the Christians require a sign and the Greeks seek after wisdom. Nope, doesn't say that. It says for the Jews require a sign and the Greeks seek after wisdom. It's the Jews who need signs. Why? Because they don't have the word of God. They're not walking by faith. Christians, we walk by faith, not by sight. Here's another scripture on the matter that these, these Satanists don't like. Uh, further showing that these signs were for Israel. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 21 and 22. In the law it is written, With men of other tongues and other lips will I speak unto this people, and yet for all that will they, will they not hear me, saith the Lord. It goes to verse 22. Wherefore tongues are for a sign, not to them that believe, but to them that believe not. But prophesying serveth not uh, for them that believe not, but for them which believe. But notice verse 21. In the law it is written. What's your what's it referring back to? Well, tongues were a fulfillment of prophecy to Israel. Isaiah chapter twenty-eight, I believe it is, verse Isaiah chapter twenty-eight verses believe verse eleven Isaiah chapter twenty-eight verse eleven to twelve. For with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people, to whom he said, This is the rest wherewith you may cause the weary to rest, and this is the refreshing, yet they would not hear. Okay, Tongues were assigned for Israel. They were, in fact, assigned for Israel. Sorry, Pekoski, you're actually the one in error there. They were assigned for unbelieving Israel because the Jews require a sign. 1 Corinthians 1, verse 22. Believing Israel that God's salvation was now available to other nations. Really? Hmm. Well, then how can we see in Acts chapter now watch, 10? Watch as he twists Acts chapter 10 and leaves out a fact because there are examples of Gentiles doing gifts of the Spirit. But notice... I, I did a video on this. Every single time you see tongues being being uh, spoken in Acts, there's always unbelieving Jews that are present. Pekoski leaves that out when he quotes Acts 10. Watch this. 45 through 47, it says this. And the believers from among the circumcised who had come with Peter were amazed, because the gift of the Holy Spirit was poured out on the Gentiles, for they were hearing them speaking in tongues and extolling God. Then Peter declared, Can anyone withhold water for baptizing people, these people who have received the Holy Spirit? So if tongues were only a gift for unbelieving Israel, then why were the Gentiles seeing it, and why were the Gentiles doing it? 
Uh, Jew- no, he didn't. They weren't saying the, gun, the gifts were only being done by Israel. See, you're lying and twisting what they're saying. This guy is he's, he's lying. He's not honest. Okay. And notice too how he overlooks the fact that yes, there were Gentiles performing the gifts of the Spirit. But notice how he kind of he kind of reads verse 45, but no, uh, he misses something. Notice verse 45. It says, "And they of the circumcision, which believe, were astonished." Okay, they of the circumcision are the Jews. They were present there with the Gentiles as they were doing the gifts of the Spirit. Okay, they were Jews that were present. See, funny how Pankowski kind of leave that out. And again, Gentiles perform the gifts of the Spirit, but that doesn't disprove the fact that they were for unbelieving Israel. See, he's twisting the narrative just like any Pharisee would. Jew would never listen to a Gentile. Again, this is somebody who doesn't know Scripture. They're completely ignoring verses that, you know, it's completely ignoring verses that, uh, you know, that shatter their narrative. And, and they're not giving you those verses at all. I mean, Acts chapter 10, 45 to 47 here completely destroys their false teaching on this site. No, no, your twisting of that verse supposedly destroys that false teaching. No, it's actually false teaching, by the way, quote unquote. No, you actually twisted that verse to attempt to refute the, the teaching they were putting on that page there. See, this is what Pharisees will do. They will twist scripture and they will twist the word of God to justify their own traditions. So don't be deceived by Rich Pankowski. He's a lying snake. Just had to get this video out there. It was it was a bit messy, just on the spot. Not really, not a whole lot of notes written down. So anyway, don't be deceived by Rich Pankowski and don't be, de- be deceived by this whole charismatic cult out there. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye. I'll let you come on me right now and I'll sit back. I'll let you come on me right now and I'll sit back. I'll let you come on me right now and I'll sit back. I'll let you come on me right now and I'll sit back. I'll let you come on me right now and I'll sit back. I'll let you come on me right now and I'll sit back. I slept with everybody and their brother. I, I was a womanizer. I was, I, you know, I was a drug addict. I did drugs. I slept with everybody and their brother. I, I slept with everybody and their brother. I, I slept with everybody and their brother. I hurt women. I lied. Thank you.